May we please stand for the reading of the word. Today our reading will come from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou art once angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and if thou comfortest me, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. I read to you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. May God have a blessing to the readers, listeners, and doers of his most holy word. May we please bow our heads. Father, we come to you with our heads bowed down, but our hearts are delighted and is elevated to the heavens above. We're asking you to continue to look over us, bless us, and give us that wisdom and knowledge that we need in order for us to fulfill your commandments and the things that you want us to do. We're asking you to lift up those bowed down heads because some of them are bowed down because not to praise you, but because they're confused and don't know what to do but to bow their heads. But who else but you can lift that head up, give them some new directions so that they might be able to go on and see this journey to the end. We're asking you to bless the mothers, fathers, the children, and all the people of this church, and not just this church, but any church that's over in your name. We're asking you to bless the voices of the music ministry that's going to come and, and render music to you today so that they might be able to give a little life to your, your life. We're asking you to bless the just the country because it needs blessing and it needs some direction, and only that direction that you can give. We ask you to bless this community, bless the world, bless those people that's in the Ukraine because they're going through something that we hope we'll never have to go through, and that's a war on their own territory. We ask you to lift those heads up, this bow down, those lost ones, so that they might be able to get their oppressors to see that they didn't ask for a war, they just asked for peace peace that you can give. We're asking you to bless East St. Louis because East St. Louis is just a starting point. And we're asking you to bless and do all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, New Bethel. Good morning. Announcements, March the 6th. Five star leadership class, 8 a.m. on campus. New member orientation class, 9.15 to 9.45 a.m. On campus, Sunday school classes will meet at 9 a.m. for virtual classes. See Superintendent Brother Rupert for a specific day and time. And Brother Rupert wants everyone who is interested in going to BBS training next Saturday, March the 12th, We'll be leaving the church at 7 a.m. Be here by 6.45. We'll be leaving at 7 a.m. Thank you. Sunday morning worship service, 10 a.m. Don't forget to check the bulletin and New Bethel's church website for updated weekly activities for March 7th through 13th. Your ties on low are located in the back pocket of our chairs. Don't forget to volunteer for Cheers in the Youth Ministry to volunteer for additional information, contact Deacon Tyrone and Sister Karen Smith or one of the ministry leaders. Free tax service is going on. We're on through April the 12th, every Saturday and Tuesdays for a specific time, fly located at the front desk. If you would like information regarding 2022 Camp New Bethel, please contact the church office at 618-397-8155. Tickets for the continuing are available for purchase starting today after service. Please assist the lavender for your tickets. The tickets are twenty dollars. Deadline to submit application for Reverend Myron Taylor Academic Excellence College Script and Minor Parts Sports and Recreation Scholarship. Application is April fifteenth. For specific information, see fly located at the First Touch Ministry Desk or see a member of the Scholarship Committee. This year, BBS training will be Saturday, March twelfth, eight a.m to 12 noon at Logan Street Church in Mount Vernon. Please see Brother Rupert Deaconess Amos for registration details. If you want to start your day with prayer for you and your family members, please dial into our wonderful prayer line. We have saints of God giving up early to minister to our church family and those in need of prayer every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 6 a.m. call in line 605-313-4441. Access code 630 854. Don't forget to invite saved and unsaved family members and friends to our Sunday morning, Wednesday night worship service. It is still not too late to be in all the building fund drive campaign and the completion of our second floor education recreation building. You may give your tithes envelope under all the in building fund. Everyone is asked to continue supporting our media ministry. For those who desire to be on our sick and shut in list, contact the church office or see an usher to get a prayer request form. Don't forget to include in your prayers our members, relatives, friends, those in bereavement, our service men and women, and our leaders in our churches and countries. Y'all have a good day.
Galatians chapter 1 and verse 5 says that from Jesus Christ, the faithful one, who's the first of the born from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to, who loves us and frees us from our sins by his blood. Isaiah said that he was wounded and he was crushed because of our sins. By taking our punishment, he made us completely well. So,
set to your feet. Give the Lord glory. Come on. Give the Lord glory. I said give the Lord glory. If you're thankful for his blood, come on. Come on, you got a reason to bless him. If you're thankful for his blood. Hallelujah. Father, we're thankful, we're grateful for this day. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for this opportunity to preach your word. Thank you that we can worship you, God. Not under duress, but God, not out of compulsion, but because you've been so good and you've been so kind. Lord, right now, forgive us for every sin that we've committed. Let the words of my mouth, the preacher, let the meditation of my heart, the preacher, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. We rebuke and bind the witch and the warlock that may come against this word. We bind every confusion, every distraction in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cover the minds and the hearts of your people. Let God's people receive your word with gladness. Let it be planted on good ground and bring forth fruit in a due season. We give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, Luke Bethel, give him one more shot of praise. We greet you all in the all-sufficient name of the Lord Jesus. Give honor to our deacons, our mothers, our ministers, and God. If you'll meet me in the Hebrew hymnal, Psalms chapter 32, we're going to look at verse 11, then we're going to skip over to 33, verse 1. Two verses in your hearing, tucked away in the hymnal of the Hebrews, we will find these two passages of scripture that will lead our thought today. The Lord says this month, in the month of March, I'm going to encourage you every Sunday. So these sermons are going to be full of sugar. You're going to be running around, amen. Because I want you to be encouraged in this month of March. Amen. In my prayer time, the Lord says they need to be re-encouraged about my goodness. If you're in the Hebrew of the hymnal, the Hebrew hymnal, you'll find in the division of the 32nd division, you'll find in verse 11, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Some of y'all still ain't got it. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Ye righteous and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart go to chapter go to the 33rd division verse number one rejoice in the Lord O ye righteous for praise is comely for the upright will you just turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I'm a noisy Christian I'm gonna tell somebody else I'm a Christian Come on, tell somebody else I'm a noisy Christian. Come on, tell them if I get noisy today, it's just because I'm a noisy Christian. In the name of Jesus. Now give God a shout of praise as you see that. I'm a noisy. I'm not nosy, but I'm noisy. Home, home court advantage, home court advantage. Believe it or not, I'm almost done. A home court advantage is a term in sports. And I'll tell you something right now, uh, that, that in sports, when they talk about home court advantage, what they're literally saying is the noise of the crowd does two different things. It, the noise of the crowd, the same noise of the crowd is intended to affect the visiting team. Kind of like last night, my Lakers finally won a game. Y'all ain't talking about nothing here. They beat the Golden State Warriors, and that's for Brother Charles Brown. He's a big Golden State Warriors fan, and I thank the Lord that they won. Hallelujah. Thank God for all the Laker fans in here. Y'all ain't saying that. Well, the noise of the crowd is intended to affect the visiting team. But that same noise is also intended to energize the home team. So here it is, you can have one noise and they do two different things. One, one team is affected, they cannot function, they cannot understand, they cannot think because the noise is a distraction. 
for the other team hearing the exact same noise are now energized by that and the roar of the crowd, the sound of the music, it gives them power, it gives them energy. Can you imagine in the same church, on the same road, on the same street, we all are affected differently by noise? That some of your neighbors right now are mad that you're going to be screaming the whole sermon? Don't you know that somebody on your road is upset that you are a noisy Christian? And I want you to look down your road and say, neighbor, you better get ready because I'm just a noisy Christian. Because the noise does not affect me negatively, but it energizes me. That's why we find in this psalm, in, in the 32nd division, we find this connection between 32 and 33. Because in 32, David lays out for us the same things we find in Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, we see David repenting for his sin. And if we were in a traditional Hebrew Bible, Psalms 32 would precede Psalms 51. But because we understand the order of the English Bible, Psalms 32 comes well before Psalms 51. But David is encountering this repentant heart that he has towards God. And he ends the psalm in this fashion. In verse number 11, he says to us, he says, be glad in the Lord. He doesn't say be glad about everything that's going on in the Lord, but he does say be glad in him. Can I tell you, there are things in my life as a believer that I get upset about because I'm like, God, where are you now that I need you right now? See, I was there on Sunday giving you glory, but here it is Monday and it looks like you're nowhere to be found. David says, check yourself before you wreck yourself. He says, be glad in the Lord. I need you to scream at your neighbor and get a man and say, be glad. Be glad. He says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. He says, rejoice, be righteous. So then in verse 11, what he's really saying, I'm not talking to everybody. Yeah, yeah. This is an A and B conversation. And if you ain't righteous, you can see your way out of it. Because I'm talking to people who understand that God is a good God. And you're supposed to say, yes, he is. I'm talking to people that know they couldn't have made it unless God brought them through. I'm talking to people that got a testimony that your test did not kill you. That your trial didn't take you out, but you're still here by the grave. I'm talking to those folk. Yeah. Yeah. David says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous. He says, I'm going to put a stamp on it, and I want you to know that I ain't talking to your cousin Bud. I ain't talking to your Uncle Ray Ray. I ain't talking to your, your Auntie Patricia. I'm talking to you. I'm saying if you righteous, I want you to be rejoicing. If you righteous, I want you to be glad in God. I don't mean you got to be frolicking around and skipping around every day of the week. But you need to understand that though you're in a trial, you're coming out. Will you prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going through it, but I'm coming out of it. Y'all got the wrong neighbor. They still quiet. Tell them, I'm going through it. This is what he says. I'm giving the verse number one. That's my main text. Shout. Yes, he God. says, and shout for joy. Yes. In other words, I ain't got it now, but if I keep shouting, yes. it's going to come. Y'all, y'all get some place. He doesn't say shout because you got it. He says shout to get it. Yes. He says shout for joy. So that's why we scream. That's why we run around. That's why we yell. Because we're shouting for joy. If I keep quiet, I can't get what I need. But find you a neighbor early in the sermon and say, I'm just a noisy Christian. All ye that are upright at heart. David makes a connection between 32 and 33. He says that he ends 32 after going through this long soliloquy saying, I got to repent. I got to be in order. He ends it by telling the righteous, after you repent, shout. After you repent, be glad. After you get through 
through your trial. I want you to shout for joy. But then he starts 33. How he ended 32. Ain't it a good thing for God to start how he ended? He started this week by blessing you. He gonna end the week by blessing you. He started the week by bringing you through. He gonna end the week by bringing you through. He started the week by laying his hand on you. He gonna end the week by y'all ain't telling me preach. He gonna end it how he started. He started in in, in thirty second division, but then he said something because this song is a connection. Write this down. There is a connection between repentance and praise. Because the reason some of us can't praise is because we have an unrepentant heart. The reason that some of us can't lift our hands is not because the music don't move us, but Satan is telling you, you ain't worthy. Satan is telling you, you can't praise God. You was just drinking last night. How? You gonna praise God. You were just watching pornography, but tell that devil, a just man falls seven times. But the Lord, lift him back. I don't know about you. I don't know what time I'm on, but I don't fail a couple of times, more times than I can remember. But every time I fall, he lifts me back up. Look at somebody and say, he's lifting me. Somebody ain't happy for you because they want you to be down. But tell that devil, I can't stay down. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he sounds a little old me, my soul. Here I come. This is, y'all sit down, y'all scared of the guests. Yeah, he says in 33, this is a general song. And it's broken up. Thank you, sister. Gives it my power coming. He breaks it up in two different parts. He says in the first part that God is creator of all. What does that mean? That means that God is in control. So when disaster hits your family, don't you be a uh, son assuming like God was surprised. Can I help you out real quickly? As a believer, you are not a superhuman. It doesn't mean that you don't have emotions, yeah. that you don't have things that bother you. Can I help you out? As a preacher, my heart's been broken, my feelings get hurt, my mind through crazy trials, but here's the consolation. He didn't say it would be easy, but he just said, I've been bringing this far just to leave you. He never told me this road would be easy, but I just believe that God didn't bring me here just to leave me where he found me, but God has a plan for my life. He says that God is creator of all, and he is the Lord of history. He says in this song that God rules over all of his creation. Let's put a pin right here before I get exegetical. Here's what he says. He says that God is Lord over all. But I got a question. If you Lord over all, why do you let bad things happen to good people? Well, can I help some of you out? You ain't good. So bad things don't happen to good people. Because you ain't no good anyway. I ain't no good anyway without God. So you can get that away, but God has a scripture that you can stand on. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. So the bad stuff is working out. The good stuff is working out. The stuff I don't understand, he's working out. When you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the reason I'm yelling is because I'm a noisy Christian. And when I feel when I think I worship When I think I start running Because he's been so good Say yes God Is the creator of all And God is sovereignly Watching over his creation And he tells the devil You can't touch him there But I will allow you to touch him there yeah, yeah, you, you can't bother them, but I'll allow you to bother them. 
and it looks like God is like a mean, evil scientist. And like he's in heaven having fun at our expense. But let pastor encourage every last one of you in person and online. God is not having fun at your expense. But God is allowing you to go through things so you can be strengthened in your faith. How would you know that he's a good God if you never had a bad time? How would you know he's a healer if you've never been sick? How would you know he's a mind regulator if your mind had never been through nothing? Look at somebody and say, I want to know him. In the fellowship of his suffering, I want to know him. In the power of his resurrection, I want to know him. In the fullness of his glory, I want somebody to say, I want to know him. Says to him that this song, this song is God showing off. God is showing off. But first one is where you and I get in on the party. It ain't no fun unless the homies can have some. Here it is. God says, I make a way that you can step in and be a part of this deliverance. Here's what God says to you and I. He says, this is all I need from you. I don't need you to do anything but this. Somebody say, is this easy? This is a call of praise prelude. A prelude is an action or an event that is a sense of something coming after it more important. In other words, a prelude says, this is an appetizer. But what's coming is better than the appetizer. Now, now listen, I know Applebee's has some good appetite. Y'all just excuse me. I ain't Sydney right now. I know about five star restaurant, but every now and then when that check's funny, y'all ain't saying nothing. Applebee's, they're two for 20. Bless it. Oh, Lord. They changed keys on that one. Y'all ain't saying that. That two for 20 come in handy. You don't go to Ruth Chris, not every day. You don't go to this place, not every day. Every now and then, we hungry, daddy. Two for 20, everybody, let's go. Now it's for two, but five go eat off of y'all ain't saying a word to me. Some of y'all ain't clapping, y'all ain't saying a word to me. I know I'm gonna make two dollars stretch. God says, I need you to get the appetizer ready. Cause I'm bringing the main course. Here's your homework. I want you to read Psalms 33. And if you don't run, come tell me. And I'm trying to read it to you again because when you read 33, it shows you the splendor of God. Here's what he says in the praise prelude. He says in verse number one, I'm done. Rejoice in the Lord. The word rejoice in the Hebrew means renown. It means to overcome or shout for joy. Can you write this down? That the reason that you are a noisy Christian is because you remember you got a reason. You got a reason to be noisy. You got a reason to scream. You got a reason to rejoice. Because people don't know all the hell you've been through. People don't really realize how God has brought you out. And some of y'all, God still working on but God keep waking you up even though you messed up and tore up from the floor. But he's still a good God. He's still making ways. He's still opening doors. Look at your neighbor. I got to remember, I got a reason. And some people don't even need to think long. They can just think back to yesterday. And if Bishop Chapman was here, he said, look where he brought me from. Can you just do that for me if I ever just think about it? And if it take you more than 30 seconds, slap your neighbor, but some of y'all need only five seconds to think about how good he's been, how he's blessed your children, how he's touched your grandbabies, how he touched your body, how he touched your job. Look at your neighbor and say, think about it. And remember. How good he's been. If you didn't come to have 
got some people right now sizing me up. They trying to figure out what they gonna do. Can I tell you that even when the devil is forming weapons against you, your praise will confuse the devil. People trying to figure out why does he preach the way he does? Did we try to do this? Did we try to do this? It don't matter to me because praise is my weapon. You gotta realize I didn't start preaching like this when I got to East St. Louis. I've been preaching like this because I know the goodness of Jesus.
Because we was doing that without praising God. But what you fail to realize, it was some people still, you wasn't, but somebody was. We have a new parking lot. We have this. We have that. I don't need to praise God. But the Bible, which is what we believe, says rejoice in the Lord. Hold. Wait a minute. Let's put some Bible in it. Here it is. Only rejoice when you feel like it. Only rejoice when you need something. Can I help you out? There are people and things being plotted against you right now, but I, for 30 people who will be obedient, if you will open your mouth and shout, it will stop the plan of the enemy. Shout! I gotta go. Remember, you got a reason to be noisy. Praise is the, it says rejoice. In the Lord, all oh, you righteous, for praise is calmly for the upright. Now, 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 one translation says that praise is becoming of the upright. The upright and the righteous are synonymous because righteous people are upright people before God. Remember what I say: righteousness is not perfection. Righteousness is based on faith. It says that Abraham believed God and it was a to him righteousness. So the fact that you got faith in God, you are righteous. I need everybody in here that's righteous, wave your hands at me and say, I'm righteous. So if I'm righteous, that means I got God. If I'm righteous, that means I gotta lift my hands. If I'm righteous, that means I gotta say thank you, Jesus. Because God's been so good to me, I gotta give him glory. I gotta give him thanksgiving. Well, so in the month of March, here's my last point, and I'm getting out your way. You got your marching orders. Because in the month of March, it's a month of praise. Because he says that the reason I want you to rejoice is that praise is becoming of righteous people. The only reason that I'm noisy is because that's what praise people do. We get real noisy. We get real loud. Because praise is becoming of a righteous person. When, I, when my, my wife was raising my daughters, and my daughters would do something, she would say, that's not what ladies do. She was saying that that behavior is not becoming of a young lady. When I was, when I said, we're raising TJ, I said, that's not what men do. It's not behavior that is becoming of a young man. But can I help you out that being quiet is not the behavior of righteous people because the Bible says that praise is Calmly among the righteous. In other words, when we get around other righteous people, we can't be quiet. Because when you start to think, I begin to think. When you start to praise, I just start praising. When you begin to run, I just start running. When you lift your hands, I begin to live. Why? Because we serve the same God in the same way He's been. He's been good to me. I'm ready to go to church now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's been so good. He's been so kind. So I can't keep quiet. I'm like Jeremiah. When I tried to keep it to myself, it was like fire. Shut up in my bones. I tried to sit down, but it was like 
is becoming of a believer. So look at somebody and say, neighbor, excuse me, because I'm a little noisy. But you won't know what the Lord has done for me. Yes, you don't know how good he's been. You don't know the mess that he got me out of. You don't know all the hell that I've been through to get here. So that's why I'm noisy. That's why I scream. That's why I give him glory. Do I got a witness in the house? Turn to your neighbor. I said turn to your neighbor. Just hide me! 
I'm going to put a praise down payment on my next week. Give him glory. Yes. Yes.
God says your breakthrough is going to be in your shout. You cry long enough. God says, I want you to shout because the breakthrough is in your scream. You've been holding it in because you're typically a quiet person. But God says, the moment you shout, things are going to begin to shatter in your, in your household, in your body, in your mind. Open your mouth to my help shout and shout.
I already preached the sermon about one same, always same. It doesn't apply to somebody who accepted Jesus and then lives a life that doesn't know Jesus. I'm talking about somebody who, who really knows him. And if you fall, he can lift you back up. If that's you today, you say, Pastor, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I don't want you to wait. Come right now. There's a minister waiting. If it seems overwhelming, don't let that be an excuse. They're just up here to receive you. That's all. Ain't no big deal. Come and get prayer. Come and get salvation. If, you're, if you've been born again and maybe you backslid, maybe you've never repented of your sins, I want you to come right now. If you're a young person and you think you got a whole life ahead, of you, you can die at any moment. And just because you came to church don't mean you're going to heaven. It's about heaven or hell. It's that simple, y'all. I don't know no other way to, to preach that. Come, rededicate your life to Jesus. Pastor, I'm saved, but I need to connect with the church. If that's you, you want to make this your place of worship. I don't use the term home church because that can mean a lot of different things to different people. But if you want this to be your place of worship, I want you to come right now. Come on. Salvation. Rededication. Church member. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's you walking. If that's you moving, every eye around, every eye closed. My will
And I'll give you the honor in Jesus' name. Give God a hand clap for praise. Can I tell you this real quickly? That when there's a noise complaint, people out of a neighborhood that has too much noise. Catch the rip. People move out of a neighborhood that's too noisy. So if you don't you want Satan to move out of your neighborhood, get noisy. Yeah. Yeah. Like they bring my property by now. Noisy Christians make the devil leave. For God inhabits the noise, the praise of his people. So where God is, Satan don't want to be. Any noisy people in that room? Make some noise. who's here maybe for the first time and maybe watching online and you're trying to find out why do churches receive tithes and offering? It is not an act of manipulation, but we believe that giving is an act of worship. Real softly, when you give to the United Way and to other charities, you feel good about that because you feel like you're helping someone and you believe that those are Christian organizations but when you give to your local church you are literally saying that I am I am all in with what's going on at this local assembly and God is at that local assembly watch this and we're going to use those funds to do ministry so I don't care what it is the devil is telling you. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're not given to a man, but we're given to God. God is not a bill, but we are sowing a seed by faith in Jesus' name. I want you to get your seeds in your hand. You may be given traditionally today. That means you're going to march around and you're going to give into these baskets all in your tithes and offerings. Don't forget, our young ladies are standing on the side for a dollar of hope for our scholarship, which I just got a report that our scholarship fund has swelled and we give the Lord glory and we're gonna be able to give out multiple scholarships to people and all those scholarships are free of charge. All they have to do is follow some simple guidelines. So let's give it up for our education committee. We give it up for You can give three ways, you can give three ways. Traditionally, you can give through the Cash App, New Bethel MB Church. Look for our purple logo. Also, you can give through the website, newbethelmbchurch.com. As Minister Charlie and the other ministers say, shameless plug, if you want to come to the church and you want to give those tithes and offerings, you can trust God. You cannot beat God giving, no matter how much you try. And can you do something today? When you come around and give today, give it with a praise heart. Give it with a noisy heart. Tell God, thank you, that you have seed to sow. Let me pray with you. Father, in Jesus' name, even online, we pray for these, your people. Bless every seed that's being sown. Multiply the seed sown and give them bread for their food. We rebuke the devourer for their sake. That's what your word says. Thank you that our education wing is debt-free. 
thinking that our second floor is painted full, fully operational and God fully furnished. We give you glory for this is the kingdom vision that you've given us as a body. And we give you glory for more than enough to get it done. In Jesus' name, we say amen. We're the heads of our ushers. Govern yourself accordingly. that you can reap a harvest as the Bible declares in due season. So let us pray with you as we uh, send you off into your next week. Remember that your praise will confuse the enemy. Yes, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, God, even now, that you would touch the hearts of your people. And that, Lord God, thank you that you have already gone before us and made the crooked places straight. We thank you that you, Lord God, are even in our tomorrow. Thank and so, God. Father, we pray that you would touch the hearts of your people, those, yes, God. Lord God, who are making the decision to make you as their personal Lord and Savior. Yes, we pray, Lord, that you would minister to your people, that you yes. would cover them, that you would keep them as we move forward, Lord God. We thank you that your word is transforming our minds and renewing our hearts, and we give you praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and do believe. We say thank you now. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, people of God. We'll see you, see you Wednesday. On Wednesday. Wednesday night.